Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, this week I'm going to talk to you about uh, this lens that I showed in the intro. It is the uh, Nikon uh, 35mm uh, PC, or PC in Nikon 35mm uh, 2.8, which is a perspective control lens uh, you use this to, um, to uh, correct for, uh, for uh, those uh, uh, vertical lines that get kind of, if you photograph a tall building and they kind of come against you or come against you and uh, do this, I think it's called converging uh, lines, uh, I think that's what it's called. <clears throat> um, so uh, it's used to, to correct that and if you uh, have a look here, uh, you can see that um, this is actually a very fine piece of glass. Uh, I'll put the uh, the data about us up here uh, when it's from and, and, and so on. But the way you use it is that you uh, of course put it on the camera. Now I can't do that uh, right now because of both cameras are recording this but but um, you put it on and then you um, you change the perspective. So let's, uh, let's say it's on the camera now. Uh, you can change and you can well you can change the perspective in any direction you want because this one turns all the way around. Um, so, yeah, so th that, that is how you do this. Uh, let's say you're photographing, uh, having your camera and portrait, but then you need to correct, you just uh, turn and twist it um, like this to, um, maybe I should show it like this. And then you can change the perspective. It's easier for you to see when I get back to the computer than I'll show you. But just a funny detail here is that um, it's got two aperture rings one that actually locking this one you turn uh, pre press it in and then turn it to uh, to lock the aperture and let's say we are going to photograph at f8 and then when you focus because it can be difficult it can be difficult to focus um, with such a small aperture because it's locked there's no connection to the camera it's just a locked aperture this is one piece of chunky metal um, then you open up to 2.8 uh, to focus and then you go back to um, to uh, f8 to close down the aperture and there's absolutely no connection to um, uh, or oh, sorry there's no uh, there's no uh, movement in uh, the photo focus uh, or anything no focus creeping it's called um, when you do the focus it's here it's all manual and everything in, uh, in this lens is just it's running so smooth and so yeah it's like it's brand new there's a few scratches on the outside but nothing else but so um, this is another one of my lucky buys on an, on an auction uh, or maybe I should open it all the way up to 2.8 and you should be able to see the aperture can you see the aperture there you can I don't know if you can focus here can I have the focus there yes <clears throat> and now you can clearly see that uh, it's opened all the way so if I close it down now uh, the one with the clicks, nothing happens. So let's pretend that now, now I'm, I am put it back to F8. So let's pretend that now I am at F8 and then I want to focus, so I'm fully open. And when I close down, you should be able to see. You can see that? I hope you can see that. I can see that some glare, but you probably can see the, the aperture plates move in there. And they are shut tight. Uh, a lot of cameras uh, work in the way that um, it's fully open and then it, it closes down. It's exactly the same that's happening here, uh, except that this is uh, manual. And that is because if you really want uh, uh, everything to be to be sharp, you could go to f16 or something like that. But when you look at the aperture there, it's it's well, you can hardly see it, can you? It's difficult to see, but it's. There, you can see it. It's very small and there's not a lot uh, of light uh, coming through. And if you're doing architecture and stuff like that, you want a small, um, a low uh, ISO, um, the lowest possible, uh, I assume, to uh, to get everything sharp. So, um, if you see the back, there's absolutely nothing there. No uh, switches, no nothing. Um, no connection. and. Um, having said that, uh, you can't uh, even tell the camera which uh, aperture you're shooting in. So this is very much uh, fully manual. You, you really need to um, 
to watch your light meter, or uh, when shooting uh, mirrorless cameras, you need to uh, to uh, be very, very play, play, pay attention to um, to uh, what you see, uh, use your histogram and stuff like that. So that's just a short intro for this uh, lens. Of course, I'm going to put it on a FTC adapter and. Uh, and put it on a camera and go uh, shoot some pictures and then I'll uh, see you in just a second at the computer where I can show you the images and we can talk about why you should use this and maybe why you shouldn't. So uh, let's uh, let's see how this works. <coughs> um, just import the files, uh, done some uh, slight uh, color correction to them and, um, and then I made uh, three uh, images of each as you can see but have a look here on the screen and I'll show you what I mean. I'll just go to full screen now. Uh, the first one is taken um, without any uh, perspective uh, change, perspective control. The next one I uh, did the um, editing in uh, inside Lightroom. I'll show you that in the end of the video how I did this. And this is with the perspective control. So without editor in Lightroom and with the with the lens controlling it uh, and there's a big difference between those two I hope you can see that that you lose something in the bottom uh, when you do it uh, on the computer uh, next example is this gate uh, I'm sorry about this this is not the best image but you can clearly see that if you do that in the posts it looks like this and if you do it in the lens it looks like this uh, there's a strange thing about this because why, well, I, yeah, I gotta admit it, uh, this is not taken uh, straight. Uh, I was uh, not being too careful there, so maybe this is even better, but, uh, and still, yeah, we'll have to <laughs> take the next ones and look at them. This is, this is a bad example. Uh, this is another entrance of another building. Um, this is without the uh, control. Uh, done in the editing and done uh, with the control uh, perspective change in the lens and I might have overdone it because as you can see out here in the uh, in the side it's it's almost like it's tilting forward to, towards me now uh, it's not a, a full uh, on off uh, thing you can uh, adjust it uh, fine-tune it but uh, I was hand uh, holding this and uh, yeah just had to do it in a hurry um, so but as you can see, you get a lot more um, real estate here. Another entrance, because they're so nice and easy, and this is a tall one. Uh, and by the way, that's not a, he's not alive, this guy. He's a nice one, yeah. Um, you can see clearly some converging lines here. They're very easy to see here that the space up here uh, is much bigger than down here and also in the other side, of course. Um, if I correct it in post, uh, I get to something like this. And uh, it actually gets uh, straightened up here because I wasn't quite... You can see there's a bit of more air up here than over here. So uh, in post-processing, this is actually quite uh, all right. Uh, but this is how it looks when you do it in the lens. And um, yeah, it's almost perfect. But it also reveals that uh, I've done a small mistake because this is in fact tilted a little bit towards this side over here and that's why the, uh, the roof is not uh, straight and this, why, this is why this one is a little bit uh, smaller than, than the distance down here. But if you correct that, uh, it should be perfectly straight, but uh, yeah. And uh, another example, this time in a horizontal um, position with the camera. The Without the shift, it's not a shift, it's a control, yeah, never mind, this perspective, uh, change of perspective. Um, without, in post, and done in camera. Uh, and again, you can see I was not standing correctly here, so that's why this is getting a bit crooked. Now here's an example that is really, really, really easy to see. Uh, you can easily see that this container looks like something you don't want to see. But look at that. I wasn't really paying attention here, so uh, I cut the corner over here. But this is done in posts. 
And look how much I, I lose a lot of uh, real estate around it. This is done in camera and you can have, well, it's just, this is close to perfect. Um, yeah, and that's, uh, that's about it. I will go inside post-production now and just show you. Uh, let's take, let's take this one and go to develop and uh, I will just show you how I did this. It's actually in here in the transform module in the develop uh, over here. And I just pressed the auto button just to see what happened. And this is how the software handles this. But as you can see, you lose you lose uh, some resolution, you lose some of the image out here. In fact, it says up here that it's the same uh, resolution still that it was before. I'll just go back. Uh, it claims to have lost no pixels, as you can see up here. But yeah, that's a bit strange. So it, it must uh, some kind of copy some of these pixels to, to, um, to do this. I don't quite know because there seems to be stretched uh, and there must be stretched to uh, to fill the frame like this. But I don't know exactly how that works and how that algorithm works, but yeah, no one knows. Adobe do, but... So, <clears throat> what can we conclude from this? Well, uh, I'm not sure. Um, if you are in a situation where you need to where well, there's not enough space behind you and you have to get very very close to that building and you cannot shoot anymore uh, uh, with a larger angle with a with a bigger wide angle uh, wide angle like th as this um, they do exist in in, in wider uh, lenses but those perspective control lenses but if you don't own such a lens and you only have this uh, I think the option would be to use it in fact, because um, if you, when you're that close, you might be very tight on the, on the subject, uh, and you might be uh, not be able to uh, to correct it um, without correcting it in the lens. Because if you correct it in the software, you, as I've shown you, you lose something in the sides, and maybe you can't uh, afford to do that. Um, the example of the container, where I was too close on one side, that could be. If there was a wall or something, something standing here, I couldn't get further over here. That, that would be a nice example. The, then it would be a very good idea, as you could clearly see, to use the perspective control lens um, instead of using um, the software. So in some situations, um, the lens is absolutely a necessity, uh, I'd say. Uh, Alternatively, you could have a longer lens and then uh, do some stitching, do a, a panel of all this. But that, again, you that would take time and will be time, uh, well, time consuming and, and so on. Uh, and maybe that's not what you want to do. If you're doing real estate for a living, you have to be fast and you have to just boom, 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 uh, make those images. Uh, and this is easier. So if you want to have something that is as close to perfect in camera, a perspective control lens is a good option. It's also a good option if you are in very confined spaces. Uh, also, if you are indoors, photographing indoors. I didn't do that with this video, but if you are, it's a nice uh, option instead of having to sit at the computer afterwards and doing some things. And as you can see, the software actually does a pretty good job of um, of correcting those lines. Uh, so that's not bad. But um, having said that, you still need to adjust each image uh, individually because they do make small mistakes or, or maybe you, um, you, some of the mistakes get uh, revealed uh, in post uh, when you do that. Um, so, yeah. So, my recommendation is if you can afford it and you're going to shoot a lot of uh, real estate, uh, buy a lens like that, maybe a 24 would be nice. Uh, I know some people also use uh, an 84, but I think an 84, an 84, an 85. Uh, but 85, you need to go very, very, uh, very uh, far back to uh, to get the thing, uh, the building in the frame. Uh, but yeah, uh, but just something to think about. And if you don't have uh, the money to buy a lens like this, or you don't shoot a lot of real estate, then just make sure that you go far enough back. Um, and the best thing would be to have a longer lens on if you could do that, because it won't be that prominent with the lines. But 
but if you uh, can get further back uh, and get some air around it, it's it's much e- much much easier to um, to correct this in post production without losing any re- resolution on the image. So yeah, so that's it for uh, for now. Um, I see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, comment, and like. And that will be very helpful for the channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.